In this section, we'll be going through the best practices while designing REST API with Spring Framework. So let's see a list of topics that we'll be focusing on in this section. First thing that we will do is how to avoid leaking entities from the database layer into API. We'll introduce data transfer object. Then we'll be defining endpoints, we'll be choosing between get mapping and request mapping annotations. Third video will be about leveraging Spring auto conversions with request body annotation. Next, we'll be implementing API that propagates exception to the caller. So we'll see different approaches of handling that. Finally, we'll create an API that plays well with REST. We'll be mapping exceptions to HTTP codes that are according to the REST guidelines. And this is a first video in which we'll be avoiding leaking entities from the database layer into API. We'll introduce data transfer object. First thing that we will do is to create database entity. Once we will have that, we'll be creating repository. Finally, we'll create data transfer object that will be a proxy object between database layer and the API layer. So we'll start from creating a payment entity. So entity is a class that is used by the Spring data to interoperate with database layer. So we need to create a class that is annotated with the entity annotation. And also this class needs to have the ID. So ID is a unique identifier for a specific entity that will be injected into database. So in this example, it will be ID long. Then we'll have a user ID, account from account to and amount fields that also will be injected to the database. So this is our entity. We want to create a payment repository that extends CRUD repository and it will be for payment and ID is of type long. Also, we have find by user ID and find by from account methods that are doing some retrieval of user. So for example, here we are finding by user ID, specifying the user ID parameter and the query will be generated. So the query that will be generated will be select T from payment T where T user ID is this specific parameter. Also, we have find by from account. So here exactly the same syntax, but we are specifying account from. We'll have a payment controller. So this is a layer where we will be exposing our entities to end user. In this video was important to focus on that get payments and add payment is returning payment DTO, not payment entity. Let's take a look what a payment DTO is. We can see that this is a very similar object. It has user ID, account from, account to, and amount. What's the difference here is that payment DTO has no ID. If you will compare it with the payment, you can see that there is an ID field, but we don't want to expose that field to end user. This ID is an internal detail of the database layer. If you will expose it, we will not be able to change the ID or even change the database because users may want to use that ID to for example, query something or to save that information for later. We don't want to expose that. That's why we need to have some kind of a mapping layer. So here in this example, we'll have a reactive payment service. So here we can see that get payments method is just finding by user ID, specifying user ID parameter, but then we have a mapping logic. So we are mapping our payment to payment DTO. So we can see that we are retrieving the user ID, account from, account to, and amount, and it will return the specific properties. So we can see that payment DTO is created, but here we are not taking the entity from. So entity is safe in database, and payment DTO is exposed via the payment DTO transfer object. So we are not leaking the internal abstractions of database because of that.